everybody has the minutes from the 14th. Are there any, is there a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve the minutes as written. Second. I'll second, second. that. Are there any comments or corrections or any changes? All in favor? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you. We do not have the public's. Patrick, <coughs> director report. <coughs> Moving right along, sir. Right along. Um, okay, so I, I said it a little bit late. I apologize for that, but I went through and added a few things to what was kind of a pretty thin director's report um, I didn't see the a week ago, and uh, there were a few things to add in the week in between. So the, the first um, and biggest news, I think, is that we have rehired for the Youth Services Coordinator position. Oh, okay. uh, we are now with our, the, the new person is Julia Lloyd, who was <coughs> one of our subs. Um, she's someone that um, lives in Hadley. Uh, Sue knows her fairly well from do I think from the from the, the book club, nice. um, and so <laughs> had a sense of her as a person. And then you know, she came and was doing something since the beginning of the year, um, and so a couple of people have been able to work with her. We had, um, had a lovely interview, felt all felt good about her, um, and so she has joined us. So that's fantastic. Starting one. She started on Monday. <coughs> yeah. So finally, we are not short staffed, which nice. was really um, for two months we were short staffed, and it was mm -hmm. quite a um, quite a thing. And how was your vacation? It was, it was awesome. Did you feel, could you come back feeling refreshed, or did you come back feeling like, oh my gosh, there's a huge pile I need to do? More like that, yeah. yeah. But it was good but while it, was it lasted. Yeah. You know, while I wasn't here, <laughs> I didn't think of you once. As uh, well, you shouldn't. <laughs> Or the snow, right? I, well, yeah, it's snowed <coughs> on the way back. Oh. So anyway, so uh, other interesting things here. We now have uh, consumer reports online available mm, to the public, nice. which is uh, something that people have been asking for for a while. And we uh, finally took the plunge on that, and I think that's going to get a lot of use. Um, yeah. Is it open access or is it more limited access in the way that ebooks are? Like, do you have to check it out, or is it just like a link? You, it's 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 going to be a link on the library's website, and okay. you just click on the link, and it asks you if you're at home. It asks you to authenticate with your library card. If you're here, you're here, you right. just go on it. Mm -hmm. It knows that you're in the library and just lets you use it. So, okay, good. Um, is that something that's connected to Lily too? To what? To the Lily? Yeah. Oh, Libby. 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 Oh, Libby. It's totally unrelated. Totally unrelated. <laughs> totally unrelated. Sorry. Totally unrelated. Yeah. We were all wondering who Lily was. Yeah, I was at the Lily Walk. I was thinking, I was thinking Eli, Eli Lily. Lily. Yeah, yeah. Libby. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a, a couple of things coming up. Um, I don't know if you folks remember last year we had Maureen Shea, who was a, um, a Hadley resident dancer uh, and a member. Was I don't know if she was anymore, but she was a member of the Cultural Council, and she got a grant to do a series of performances here that took oh, place yeah. down in the end of in this area. Hmm. Um, she's doing it again, and she's actually doing it at a number of like three or four libraries in the area, and she's doing it with them. She's got another dancer that um, she's working with, so she got a grant again. I said, sure, you can do that here. Um, so that's happening um, on three sets of Fridays and Saturdays in March. And uh, March, April, and May. And so they dance outside? Inside. It oh, was oh, in the, in like the space. This, oh, okay. Yeah. Area. okay. Nice. Uh, and that mm -hmm. happens like after, like as we close, mm -hmm. um, uh, either at 7 on a Friday or 3 on a Saturday. So that's nice. Um, Those are two of my favorite things. Which two? Libraries and dancing. Libraries yeah. and dancing. Okay, there you go. Uh, so what, actually, the one thing that I have highlighted here that I, I I think we need, well, we're going to discuss this roof stuff, which may need some action. Um, but I am, again, looking for um, volunteers who might be willing to come to the library on two specific Saturdays, Saturday, April 8th, and Saturday, May 13th, at 9 a.m. to, hi, John. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Hi. Come on in. Hi, come in. 
um, to open the library an hour early on Saturday for the Hadley Preschool, the friends at the Hadley Preschool, which meet here once a month. Um, we have been having uh, staff come in an hour early, but I think it would be, it may be easier if we have a trustee with a key, anyone that can volunteer to be here just to let them in, and then staff will be yeah. along shortly thereafter. April. I, April I 8th and May 13th. I could do those. Awesome. That would be great. Uh, and Maureen, if something comes up, I can be a backup because I have a key and I'm a block away. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. I'll follow and up with you. That's fine. And then uh, May 18th? May what? 13th. Okay. Are you already putting them in the calendar? Yeah. So, so all right. So, no need to follow up. Fantastic. It's easy. Uh, I will bring to your attention that we discovered a small leak in the, or some, some sort of water issue happening in the local history room. There was a small oh, no. discoloration at the edge of one of the tiles, and I got the ladder out and went up, popped it up, and looked at it, and the back side of it is, you know, the majority of the surface of that panel has a stain on it. Oh, so gosh. it was a substantial amount of water, um, and there were a couple of other, like, grapefruit-sized stains on an adjacent panel. So I called Gary Berg. He came over and looked at it. Um, he's not sure what the source of it is, so he and he's not sure if this is an active leak because we can't really confirm how long it's been there. Mm -hmm. I think we would have noticed it if it had been there for any length of time, so I think it's new. Um, he's going to he's going to rig something up with pans with paper in it to sort of figure out if it's coming from above the mm -hmm. level because there's some piping up there. He's going to make sure that it's he's going to figure out if it's coming from the piping or from above the piping, okay. uh, and then we'll determine what we need to do from there. But we're we're trying to figure it out, and it's, but it is a little dispiriting. Yeah. Um, yeah. It sounds like the, Granby. Remember when we toured Granby? No, they, it, I don't remember that. Yeah, she said they, they had quite a few leaks. Really? After they opened, yeah. Really? She said the same thing, like, we spent all this time building it, and then yeah. we had leaks. Yeah. I can't remember what the source of the leaks were, but I remember her yeah. saying that specifically. Yeah. And it's right, it, without, and without knowing more, it's hard to say what it could be. Is yeah. it a fluke thing? Is it, was it something that happened when it was... You know, we're still under construction, who knows. Are there any but, damaged materials? It seems that of all the rooms, it's the yeah, one that would have the... No, light, because light. it only seemed to have soaked down enough to put a small stain... Just in the at, ceiling. At one spot. Okay. Um, it, didn't, it didn't look like it had tripped. I didn't see any sign of anything coming, actually coming through. And the panel itself is dry now, so it's hard to tell you know, how long ago that happened. Um, I have nothing on the HVAC noise, unfortunately. I do, although I did um, have have an email to Scott um, and CC Carolyn. Loom was on it, just sort of saying, you know, we've asked for this to be uh, discussed with the with the vendor who has the contract for the HVAC equipment, and, and we have not gotten response of any uh, any kind in a year, close to a year. Um, so I was kind of pushing that. So we'll see if, if that. Steam. And that's that's more or less it. In that case, we will take a brief time out yeah. in order to introduce John, John. who is considering <laughs> perhaps running for library trust. Yes, I'm considering that. That would be awesome. Yeah. Thanks. We're all in favor of consideration. My yeah. political record is not very good. <laughs> what does you know what? If you don't have one, that's fine. That's all that matters. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I, ran it, I ran in a student council election <laughs> when I was in high school, okay. and I lost. We won't See, hold that again. It's you. time to remake history. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to help. Oh, good. Thank you. So my name is John. You're, you're Maureen? I am. So we yes. kind of communicated? Yes. Um, and are you related to the, the Dora people? I'm, uh, that's a cousin. Okay. Uh, my family has a farm. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, yeah. and I'm Allison. So Maureen's rolling off. So um, that would oh. be one of your, uh, you know, a vacancy there. Um, so I'm Allison, and I've been a trustee for, gosh, I don't know, what? How many years? A long time. I've been a trustee for a long time. So, so you saw this happen? 
yes. on your watch. That's, yeah, I was the chair of the building committee at the time. Yeah. Congratulations. So, yeah. It's well, great. We just talked about the leak, so we're... Well, <laughs> but it's all good, right? It's, it's a great library. Yeah. It, was a, it was a great library over there, yes. but now you have space to, to be it. And that's handicap accessible, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. More to offer. I didn't realize you weren't running for re-election. <laughs> Sorry, I thought everyone knew. <laughs> um, I'm Jessica. Uh, Jessica Kim, I'm the secretary, or clerk, or minutes taker. And who's on your shirt? Uh, Ruth, Bader, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I, I can only excuse myself by saying I've only seen part, part of the face. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully I would have recognized it, yeah. <laughs> I remember her. The crocheted collar. It's a giveaway. Her glass. I'm Susan. I'm new to the board. Nice to meet you. I am Lynn. I am chair this year, and I was on the library building committee. So welcome. Um, as long as we're on this topic, I will say that town clerk notified me that when I posted the meeting the first time that one person had taken out papers, and I believe that person is in the next mm -hmm. room. Yeah, I know Joanne had by yeah. that time taken papers because she got my signature. But don't, never fear, there are two positions vacant no, because we had There's a, no contest yet that we, we know of. Yeah, we had a retirement. I don't know if you know um, Alan Weinberg, Weinberg, but he was, he was also a long time mm -hmm. trustee member and he, had a step down for family reasons, just like just recently. So we have. Okay, good. Yeah. So it's still safe. Well, mm -hmm. I see a lot of people don't want to run if they feel like they're running against anyone. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what the number one thing people always ask me. So. Interesting. In a couple of days to be mindful of is um, you have to take out the papers if you're interested by the 24th of March and return them by the 27th. So where do I get them? At the town, the town clerk. And Today is the 20th, so by? Friday. Friday. Yes. Okay. And then you need to get a bunch of signatures. Ooh. Yeah. Ballot. I don't, you, Ballot. You, like, you know, Hadley residents. Um, so, like, the dump is a good place to do it. Um, you know, you obviously can. <laughs> Neighbors, church, yeah. senior how, how center. Many, how many do you need? I don't remember. It's like 30. 30. I was going to say 35. I mean, usually you want to get a couple extra, because extra. if the town clerk can't read it, or if it's somebody who's not a registered voter. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm in that writer, writing group that most of those people Yeah, are perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then you can just walk over to the senior center. They're okay. suckers. Yeah. Okay. They'll sign in. Oh, that's good to No, I don't think they're suckers. Well, thanks yeah. for telling me that. I, yeah. I had no idea what was well, involved. Yeah. yeah. I called last week. It's pretty painless. And, and Jessica was like, yeah, giving me the 411. I, I have to write everything down. Some of us, you did it in Go COVID too, right? Yeah, yeah, I did yeah. too. That I, was a big pain. I coordinated over email and just yeah, drove to too. people's houses. That's what I did. Yeah. I, okay. I remember asking her, can't we just get these by Zoom? Yeah. We do everything else by Zoom, so yeah. all of a sudden I now have to go and get right. people's actual signatures. Yeah. Okay. Because some people were like, no, I don't want it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I met a lot of people on their porches. Yeah. Moving on to the roof. Mm. Mm. That's an interesting. So, um, so is this a good summary? We have the two, you got the two. You called others, but these were the only two that said they could do the job. So we these started the with the bigger list. These were the two that responded uh, affirmatively that they, could, that they could do the work and you know, actually follow through to schedule it. There were a couple of other names. One, I don't remember all the details, but a couple, one of them was like not really inappropriate appropriate to the work. Um, another one didn't return the call. Uh, I, at this point, I don't remember the, the whole. And then one of those was not even on the list. I just went, you know, and looked at Rupers and mm -hmm. looked at their ratings and okay. stuff, and called them and said, "Is this something you could do?" Yeah. Um, and they said yes. Um, 
So one, you. so like one of them basically was in the format of a bunch of questions and answers. Did you give them those questions? Essentially, yeah. And I gave them to both of them. But the other one did not answer the questions. They just gave a report. They were both they were both given the same prompt okay. to work from in terms of how I didn't instruct them on how they should write the report and I didn't know how much detail they would give. Yeah. Um, I'm just I just thought that was interesting because Reading the one report that was basically like, yeah, there's some stuff wrong, but not like major barrier and major problem, right? So if that's all we had, and you know, again, the goal is to make sure that our roof is sound and to make sure that we can put solar on it and we can convince the town the roof is good enough to put solar on it. Like you could take that one there and we would not have that argument. But the other one is not, it does not answer the question directly, right? You, I couldn't find evidence of that question directly. And they, they suggest it's a larger systemic problem that needs to be. But they never came out and said, it's not good enough to put solar on. Isn't that right? So the... Rivet is the one. Yeah, well, right. So Rivet, I'm trying to see if this is, if it, you can mention the solar here. So when the roof was built, it wasn't built with the idea for solar. It was. It was. And it was in, the building was initially, the initial design was for, it called for a metal roof, which had to be put as an alternate on the bid documents because we were, all the um, cost estimating came back higher. Um, and at that point, it was looking like we were not going to have enough money, and rather than risk having to go back to a town meeting to ask for more. We looked for ways, and that was one of the suggestions to replace the metal roof with a shingle roof, which nobody liked, but that... But it was cheaper. Mm -hmm. It was cheaper, and I think the question is, should we have... I mean, I guess it wouldn't have been cheap enough. Maybe we wouldn't have realized the savings had we gotten a better shingle roof. If we got a better mm -hmm. shingle roof, it might have been roughly a wash between a metal Correct. and an architectural yep. shingle roof. So that may be the reason why we went in that in that direction, but neither the, the OPM nor the architect ever said, you know, you should don't do this. Saying, don't do this. Yeah. Um, mm. So that really is my one question for for this roofer, who I, and I I need to send that back. But I guess if there are any other questions, I'll send those as well. But my question for him is: Is this based on the type of roof that it is? Is this shingle? In, is it just inappropriate for it to be on that kind of roof? Because what you what he's describing with the wear that's happening, based, which seems to be based on heat more than anything. Um, is this just not a shingle that's rated for this kind of roof? Should it not have been deployed in the first place? Mm -hmm. uh, he, he hasn't said any, you know, he's not saying that, but I'm just trying to, would any shingle fail under the circumstance, or is it just this type of shingle that is failing? Are those questions also that um, a solar installer would answer? They could. I think the idea between or, or behind getting these is that these folks are in no way financially involved. It, it, right. They're not. They have you no. Assume that they're not open, the They're not angling yeah. for the job. I mean, they're just giving you independent um, analysis. Whereas if we get a solar installer, um, you know, they may be thinking that they're going to be putting the solar on the roof or maybe bit angling to bid on the job. Right, but if the roof wasn't sufficient, then they wouldn't want the hassle of having to the remove town it. come back again and again and again to them. So I think it would be in their best interest. But I don't think that's no. their responsibility. Well, and I, I think so. One thing that that uh, Carolyn suggested um, that I was confused by, but I understand it a little bit better now. She was saying get a pre, what did she call it pre bid warranty okay. inspection, yeah. which essentially means the roofer or the solar company yes. looks at the roof and says, this is the condition of the roof as we see it. And then if there's like a problem later on that is attributable to, it's like they're, they're saying, this is the condition of the roof before we started working on it. And then if something happens after the fact, you can then go back and look at it and say, well, that damage wasn't there before you started chopping around yeah. and drilling holes in it. Right. Uh, but we can't get to that point without going out to bid, which is, that's kind of the catch-22 that we're in. Yeah. And that's why we just went to roofers and said, you know, rate this roof. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But wasn't it the case when we met in town hall with Gary and Tommy 
that they both said that the GAF rep, the shingle manufacturer, when they were on the roof with that gentleman, the gentleman said that the shingles there were not rated for a hot roof, i.e. one that is not vented. Correct, and that's one, what one of the reports also right. said the same thing. And so the question, one of the questions in my mind, and this doesn't apply to the roofers, is when we made the change not to put the metal roof on, should there have been changes to the roof or should there have been different shingles mm -hmm. chosen for the installation? In other words, the, it is the responsibility of the architect. Right. And I think this, I think doing this work helps, you know, Carolyn and or town council to make a decision about whether this is something that is actionable on their part or, yeah. and whether we have to swallow it or whether they might want to make some overtures that might result in them helping to make it right. But the ambiguity is, is difficult. So, yeah. you know, the, it, Jennifer, when I was over talking to Jennifer about this, Jennifer said, well, you know, really, just like anything with procurement, maybe you should get a third, you know, two, an even number is not a yeah. real helpful number. Mm -hmm. So maybe yeah. getting a, another one and just see if it, you know, what, which result it, right. it, comes, it comes up with and maybe ask a few more questions, re you know, regarding the shingles themselves and see if they have some thoughts on that. Do you think now that it's coming, becoming warmer, that you might get uh, more uh, people that would respond? Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe. I mean, the, part of the reason that we rushed to do this was because at that time all the snow had melted and we weren't sure whether the winter would cooperate, and it, it hasn't, so it's a good thing that we did it when we did it. But, um, yeah, I don't know if, there, if there's, I don't know if all the snow is off the roof at this point or not, but it should be soon, so we could at least get one more. And, have that to you know, inform the discussion. With I the mean, maybe that's why I asked all those questions at the beginning because I, you know, I want us to be realistic. That what if we can't find a third person? I'm sure, we can find a third. I you mean, think so? I, okay. I mean, I didn't spend that much time okay. like, calling roofers, but you know, the original list yielded was one of these. I think it yeah. was the Rivet Company, and then the and the other one was one that I just Googled. Okay. But there's plenty of others that I'm sure would, you know, I mean, they got paid to do it. It wasn't yeah. hard mm -hmm. work. Yeah. So the recommendation I, is to, for us to authorize one the more. funds one to, more. to yeah. have another I mean, person come? Yeah. Is it the consensus of the board that we should pursue a third evaluation? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right then. Do we need to vote on it? Do we need to authorize like up to whatever these other ones were? Like $5,000? Is that No, no, no. 500? 750. One was 750. One was 750 something. something or does it not matter because you have if the ability to... If it's less than 1,000. Okay, that's, yeah. Okay. That's the, yeah, that's how we... Okay, perfect. ...rolled with the last one. Okay, well then let's, let's take a vote to authorize the director to secure another evaluation of the roofing condition. So moved. Second. All in favor? Yes. Thank you. Thanks so just for doing that. For the minutes, we've just authorized one more evaluation for up to a thousand dollars. Should be more than enough. Okay. Because this is coming over from the leftover uh, building construction mm -hmm. funds, and he already had that like authorization to. Is there anything else that, that anyone can think of that they would like to be part of the you know, evaluation process? Any other thoughts or questions or? So I wonder, so I saw that you, you had the questions. The peak people did not mention this hot roof business. Yeah. Would it be worth asking them? So that is now a distinction. See, I didn't, these are terms that I was not even familiar mm -hmm, yeah. with before. With exactly. What is That's what the... A hot roof is, if you go and look at your roof, you usually have a soffit, and yeah. the soffit has vents, and then it goes up, and there's, at the, there's a ridge vent at the top. This does not have that. You've got the roof deck, 
which is the plywood that makes the roof, and the shingles are attached directly to that. There is nothing to keep the bottom of the shingles away from the heated attic space mm -hmm. or to minimize the buildup of heat there in that is space. On the side, right? It's the same all over the roof. Oh, okay. I don't think so. Because it's really the lower roof on, on the sides that, that that's what's showing the most wear, you know, relatively. So I'm just wondering if is it like too leading of a question to ask that, mm. or to ask, hey, uh, you know. Well, that's that's what I what I think I'm going to do is go back to this to the the one that was sort of more dire in their mm -hmm. assessment and sort of ask more questions about that mm -hmm. and just say, so tell me, you know, again, is this what we would define as a hot roof? Yeah. What, what you know, defines a hot roof? Tell me more about materials that are appropriate for a hot roof and materials that mm -hmm. aren't and try to, you know, elicit more. And then from that, when I, you know, draft another email to, to some other perspective roofer, I'll, I'll be a little bit more informed and yeah. more asking. And, but these guys never weighed in as to whether or not it was appropriate to put uh, solar on. Correct, but it sounded like they were essentially, I mean, I read between the lines here that you need to do something about the roof. Right, you need to replace it with metal, you know, basically or, is what they said. Or another shingle yeah. roof but that's properly vented and yeah. then your problems would be resolved and you can do whatever you want up there. Yeah. But right now, clearly something has to be done, so I didn't even take that into account yeah. because it seems yeah. obvious that it has to be fixed. Well, perhaps it would be worthwhile in talking to them to get, rather than infer, to ask them a more straightforward mm -hmm. question in an effort to get a more direct answer. Does a metal roof, would that be impacted by a hot roof? I mean, no. it probably would be better. I think that's, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I think that that's you know, but, that's why it was designed the way it was. Is the question the is, should, as yeah. Lena said, saying, should they have not, yeah. you know, re, um, rejiggered the roof to be this kind of roof? Yeah. The fact did that not. there's no kind of outlet or venting. True. Okay. All right. Anything else? On? Thanks, Pat. We're doing all that. Sure. It's yeah. I am yeah. sorry. Okay. We have to be doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a uh, guy that from Springfield. Would you like me to give you? Sure. Okay. He did. He did the uh, most poorly in the room. How's that looking out for? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just saying that the same room for yeah. did mine also. Okay. Because okay. so they can do. So he's doing a commercial. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you haven't heard even bad about it. It's not, it's not like their, their roof is bad. No, it, it was just done the same time. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then let us move on to the meeting room policy. Office, right? And I will start off by apologizing for throwing all of the letters up in the air and having them come back down in a very different order than what they had been in. Because it's so different from. What? Not in terms of substance, but in terms of presentation. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask if anyone has any changes they would like to incorporate, any more words that I might have misspelled in the... The only thing that I, and I, I did not, I, I was meaning to sit down and read this again um, before the meeting, and I didn't have time to do that. But my, my question is, did we, I know we talked about it. Did we incorporate some language in there about the personal, like, um, you know, like family events yes. and birthday parties? Did that make it in? I don't think so. I don't remember saying that. That was something that um, we had that that was in South Hadley's policy, um, and I asked Joe at South Hadley about that, and mm -hmm. I said, "Well, why did you do that? Were you having, you know, what was the thought behind that? Because it's in, it's at the top and it's in bold." Mm -hmm. Oh. You know, it's very hmm. prominent. Oh. Under eligibility and exclusions, library meeting rooms are not available for private, closed, commercial sales, and family functions. Oh, perfect. Okay, okay so it is in there. Great. Yes. Um, because we are having 
we are having more and more requests Request. for those kinds really? of events. Quite a lot, actually. Oh. Birthday party at the library. Uh, children's birthday parties yeah, yeah. And, and things like that. And Ooh, who wouldn't want it here? <laughs> right. I mean, Everybody loves the library. I guess. Um, but it, yeah, it is. Um, I mean, it's fine as far as it goes, but but you know, along with that comes a certain. It's kind of at cross purposes. They're not, you know. And I asked when I asked Joe about that, and you know, was kind of trying to get the sense of you know what the difference between like how they make a distinction between certain events and mm -hmm. other events, you know. Mm -hmm. And he was essentially saying like, you know, I I always go to the like the Girl, Girl Scouts or something like that, which the Girl Scouts have met at the library at various times, but it's not like, you know. You can't just walk in and join the Girl Scouts at their Girl Scout meeting, right? You have to be a member, and so how does that mm -hmm. uh, how does that work out? And his justification for that was, I mean, first of all, it is a kind of a, a director's discretion kind of issue, but it's also that the Girl Scouts, to his mind, constitute a public, you know, they are a a, a, a public organization, a public organization yeah. that right. that right. has, and a, you well, could has a public yes. purpose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you yeah. might not As be able to come to and join that particular mm -hmm. meeting, but. You could join all our yeah. yeah. It is a community event. Yeah. It is not a personal mm -hmm. event. I think there's anyone who would try to argue the distinction, I think, would be missing the boat. Um, the other thing that had been a significant discussion item at the last meeting was how to sort of use language to ensure that Patrick or any director has the ability to decline an event for perfectly good reasons, but ones that we don't want to go and enumerate because when you start doing that, then you are sure to leave out whatever it is the next person is going to ask for. Um, so that's covered by this authoriz authorization includes the option to decline a reservation for reasons related to concerns including, but not limited to, parking, staffing, concurrent programs, et cetera. Yeah, that was good. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have any I have only comments? one question. I don't remember talking about the traffic detail. I remember talking about parking, mm -hmm. and that was one of the reasons we could say, hey, you know, the concurrent programming, right, that we worry about parking. So in there, there's some line about groups the might be asked by the director yes. to, to ha have them hire a traffic detail. Like, under number three. I don't really under know how three. that even works, and I'm worried about the ambiguity, like, well, how come such and such had to have a traffic detail, and I, I just worry about putting Patrick in a... Well, so in a, in a good example of this, and this is you know, being organized by, I don't even know whose office this is being organized about, out of, but there was a, an email that went through today from who I don't remember, um, about the Memorial Day Parade, mm -hmm. for instance, and, and you know the, the Council on Aging and the Library have both said, well, I mean, we're closed, it's happening on yeah. Sunday. Um, but they still were asking, is it okay for us to use mm -hmm. this, you know, um, Parking lot as a staging area mm -hmm. because there probably will be, you know, considerations, you know, whatever it is, trash and yeah. you know, our trash can will be filled yeah. up or what, what have you. Um, and that is an instance where they're they're going to have to have a, I'm sure they're going to have to have a traffic detail and it's their responsibility to, yeah, you know, to figure that out and they know because they've done it like a hundred times. Mm -hmm. But that's an example of a big event that's not the library itself right. that we wouldn't want to have to like necessarily call the police. We want to say like yeah. Sure, you can do that here, but you're going to need to call. And there was actually an email that coincidentally was sent out today from the Hadley Police Department saying, this is the process for getting, for ordering or requesting a traffic detail. I don't know why it came out today. So there's was, clear rules and regs about yeah. who would have to do it when. So you could actually point to that document and say, you have to do it. This would be, yeah, this would be, a, it, this okay. would be such a rare a, a instance, but it would be one of those things where somebody comes up with a perfectly good thing, like a Memorial Day mm -hmm. Parade. Uh, and says we want to do this and we want to use the parking lot and maybe we agree that sure you can use the part of the building well, for that. Well, this was the staging area for that. Right, it's, yeah. it's a staging area, but but yeah. in this case it's like it, it's sort of like I don't care. We're not here on Sunday. Like do yeah. what you want. It's town mm -hmm. property. Yeah. Um, but it could be a, a situation where it's not that mm -hmm. 
you know, where we are more involved well, there is a and there. somehow, and you want to be able to say, okay, but we're not, you know, you got to do this, and if there's a cost, you have to pay it. That's, okay, that's that, all that yeah, it's there for, really. If the town has something that says, this is how to do a traffic yeah. detail and when you'd need it, that's perfect. If there's something that you can, or your staff can default to and say, this is check, why. Check with the police and yeah. see if that requires a traffic detail. Yeah, that's perfect. I still think it's such a rare instance that yeah, it would happen. Okay. But it well, I thought it was could. rare too. I'm like, why do we even put that in there? It seems mm -hmm. like a lot of work. Mm -hmm. The one time it'll happen. Yeah. 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 Okay. But it will be someone else's responsibility, not to determine. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or even if Patrick just directs well, someone I think it's, to I think the it just, if it looks like say, it's very obviously going to be an issue, if there's right. going to be like hundreds of people and, you know, I, I mean, I, I can't even imagine, aside from a parade, like mm -hmm. where, where this would come up, but it, in the odd circumstance that it does, it's but there. But someone might, someone might say, can we use the community room and spill out? Like, we're mm -hmm. going to have sure. or, yeah, a, like a thing that, outside and we want to yeah. have a hundred people be able to mill around and get food. Right. It could be expanding to hundreds of people. Right. So like I what if it was that. something that was somehow between the library or the, you know, the stuff over on the 7th Street and Hopkins and yeah, people yeah. were going to be crossing back and forth yeah. and or, it was a, you know, a safety issue. Well, what happened last summer when there was a concert <clears throat> oh, yeah. out here on the front lawn and people were were they parking, parking and then... Yeah, you know, we, didn't, we didn't have a traffic detail. We didn't have anything, you know, it wasn't that many people. It was probably 50, 60 people. Right. But I'm saying walk. that circumstance could lead to mm -hmm. certainly, so but that was a, that was a library program. If, it, mm -hmm. if we thought it was going to be bigger, that would have been on us so to that, get a traffic So details. then you would have had to do the same thing. You would have had to go contact. Yeah, the but it didn't seem like that big of a right. yeah or some no, reason. I didn't mean that specific event, but just yeah. like that. Type. It could be. Yeah, it could trigger that. Yeah. But the language here is basically just like a just in case there's some big thing. Yeah. It's it's in the document that this may be an added cost. Right. Yeah. I think we talked about whether we wanted to have an added cost for groups of a certain size for added mm -hmm. custodial, or did decide so against what, that? So what about is that, about that, that. Um, we, in the meantime, we had a conversation with the town administrator about custodial increasing the general, levels. Yeah, because um, they're only coming three days a week, and she agreed that it wasn't adequate, and they they were planning to put in the budget the money to hire someone, not a contractor, but a. Mm -hmm a staff person who would work for DPW that would clean this building, that building. I'm not exactly sure which buildings or why they made this distinction, but I know that it was us and Council on Aging, and I don't know who else, mm -hmm. um, that they were thinking would, that this person would would cover. So if there's someone coming here five days a week, I don't really feel like we necessarily need to pass those, pass yep. extra costs on to the public and, unless it's some exceptional situation. But I don't which is in there. That exceptional situation is in there yeah. about the, if you don't leave the room as you, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. in there. One other question. The language about parking just seemed a little vague to me. So it just says, should be aware that on-site parking is shared. I assume that means shared between the library and the senior center, but that's, and, and that's unclear. Or shared among town, one, yeah. shared among town Building. buildings. Just the word "share" just seemed vague to me, and I think. Well, and I think it's also it also kind of begs the question: like, what are we trying to? We're trying to say that parking is limited because a lot of people use it mm -hmm. for a lot of different purposes, and we yeah. cannot reserve parking for you. For yeah. Right. But to say it's shared among among multiple town buildings indicates that. that like to me, when I see this, that it's shared, it's like I, I might you know no, I, yeah. I might think like no, oh, it's shared between my event and the library or something. Mm -hmm. Like I might I, I might not know exactly what that's. I would just say that it's public and limited. No. Yeah. But it's... Yeah, well, that's a good way to put it instead, that the library has limited public parking. Yeah. Shared with other town buildings. Yeah. Yeah, the library shares limited public parking with other town buildings. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? May I please have a motion to 
adopt the amended meeting room policy. I move to accept the meeting room policy as Further adjusted amended. tonight. Okay. Any further conversation or discussion? All in favor? Excellent. Thank you very much. No, I, I really do think it was fortunate that we had the example that prompted the review. Or that there were no problems, but... <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, it disappeared. It dissipated. Anyway. Maureen, do you have anything to update in terms of the friends? Uh, they're in the process of doing the membership. And uh, they're also um, adding books and, um, you know, refining uh, the, the friends. Bookster? Bookster, yeah. And I think they're looking into um, buying, updating the merchandise. They're getting rid of, or they're selling. <laughs> A closeout. They're having a sale. A they're sale. having a sale. Yes. What are they getting rid of? Like they're, they're the mug, all the, the, the stuff that's the, the good. Oh, the good one. The good one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's highly collectible. No. <laughs> <laughs> Better get your tonight is what he's saying. Look into the camera. Limited edition. Yeah. yeah. I'll take your money. <laughs> um, there was something else I was going to say. Patty, uh, actually, you know, Patty's been uh, Patty Judy's. Does everybody know Patty? She has been really working this uh, book sale pretty hard um, and, and doing a great job keeping it neat and organized nice. and everything else. She took some stuff that um, we had pulled out of the collection. That it wasn't even in the collection. It was stuff that um, been deleted? Had, mm, I had probably at some point, but some of it was stuff that had been just in boxes, you know, that we dragged over from the old building. Some of the stuff um, had been sold in the auction. Some of the stuff that was sold in that, that book sale that we had where it was kind of out here in the main space. But there was yet more. There's always more. Um, and she took some stuff over to Grey Matter. Um, and I don't remember how much she told me that she got, but she took three books over there that were just not relevant to the collection, mm -hmm. um, but were valuable. And she made a couple hundred bucks. Wow. And just walked in, Good said, what do you think of these? And <laughs> cut her a check for whatever it was, 200 bucks. Wow. Her, so. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's she great. She has an yeah. amazing well, ability very creative. to. Last, last year she took a book to the flea market. Right. I think she's. I think she's honing her approach and mm -hmm. figuring out okay. how to, you know. I love it. Spend less time and make more money. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to check out the room before we leave tonight. Yeah. I haven't looked in it in oh, quite some time. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. 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 No. It's. And you too could get your it. canvas back. Mm -hmm. I have many canvas bags. <laughs> I love the canvas bags actually. But they're they're durable. durable. I, they're exactly. Durable. I might yeah. have to get more before they sold out. One last quick thing. Has everybody who needed to done the ethics lot done? Oh, yeah. Everybody I did mine less than two years ago Me too. Okay. when I was elected, That's yeah. so That's I am not <laughs> in violation. I, I double checked. For my, I double checked. <laughs> I think yeah. I did mine for you, though. But I'll double check. You might just call um, Jessica. Jessica and ask if she could see you in the database. I'm not oh, exactly sure okay. how. Cause well, instead I'll see of, her Wednesday. So yeah, it yeah. used to be that we had to. Um, Print out the, the little certificate and like bring them over, yeah. and then yeah, that it's electronic now. Now they don't do that. Yeah, yeah, it was a paper mm -hmm. thing, and it was like a nightmare because at some point it got shipped it to HR, and then the clerk was like, "But I don't have them. Can you do it?" She was making us do them again. Yeah, just because she didn't have the certificate. So this is apparently a better system, but I don't know what she can see. Like if you work for another institution, yeah. I don't know if she can see it. Okay, I thought it was really interesting. I mean, I used to do it at UMass too, but I thought it was interesting that at some point you get to the well, which of these categories of state employee do you fall into? Thank you very much, because what the procurement officer does and what I do <laughs> yeah. are not the same. Yeah. And so I appreciated that Quite. they had done that. Okay. Could I ask a question? I was going into my records to collect minutes that I had not turned in to the town, um, and I do not have the, the October minutes. I was not at that meeting. Allison, I think you took the minutes. Then I'm sure I have I one. have the November ones. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna, I'm but I think y'all were kind enough to just not keep me in the loop on emails 
in October. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm sending myself a note right now. Okay. Yes. Okay. So as far as the, the minutes go, are you are you sending them to? Have I have them you? all in a folder now, could, and could I need to share? get them to. It's, I need to get them to be, you. It's got to be me that ends up because I put them all to the. Oh, binders. I give them all to you. you and, give them to me. Okay. And there's also a binder that. Yes. Um, I the think has a hard copy of those things. Binder here or a binder here. there? Here. Okay. Yeah, but if you can send me the PDFs, I mean, I could take care of that and just print them all off and then put them in the binder. They're all but Word documents, to, but it, if they need to be PDFs, you I can send them, them to me in any format, and I will get them into what they need to be. Um, and then I'll just, because I want to put them on the yeah. website with all the other minutes. And right. We have not done a good job for the last year or so with that. That's because no, 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 it's not. It's not. We, no, it, um, well, it is. No, it predates no, it <laughs> your assumption of no, sure but just, but yeah like this is role. this is one we of those things that i just i just while. like i keep saying like whenever a meeting comes up i'm like oh, i've got all those minutes i need to get those actually posted and um i'm gonna actually send you an email right now with a whole bunch of attachments that's that's great um going back to may because that's that was the last minutes that those the first ones i took or the last ones that megan took so. I will grab the October ones. I'm sure I have them. Great. If I did them that month, I have them. Okay. I just don't have them. So right I'll now. I'll email this to you. I'll just CC you, and then okay. you can just yeah. reply to that thread, and it'll all be in one place. Perfect. Okay. Yep. The, the minutes, just to be clear, the minutes dysfunction goes. I mean, the last time that I had like a regular process for this was when Alan was doing it. So it's it's actually been Hardcore. a while. Yeah. And week. when I was doing it, I was excellent at the electronic, and I was shamefully. <laughs> bad about the printing them out and putting in that binder. I was like, this is 1990. This is driving me crazy. But the paper's going to last longer than the electronic. So I, I like saved them up and I did it like yeah. once a year. So, That's the way to go. But. so there was a lot of dysfunction that totally predated you, Jess. <laughs> you are not responsible. Yeah. Well, I, I'm responsible for the more recent ones, but I'm not responsible for starting it. <laughs> I will take that. But I am trying to catch up on these kinds of things these days, so this is one of them. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anything else we should cover tonight? Um, is there any update on the wall? Oh, the donor wall. I do not have an update on that. I need to call him again and see where he's at. I talked to him. I'm trying to remember when. Some probably around the holidays, and said, you know. What's that? Yeah. Still, still out there? So, uh, because I now have a list of all the folks, thank you to you, and then you sent that additional list of the folks who donated through the, the UMass. Um, yeah. So I now have the list of folks who would qualify yeah. for the you know 2022 wall, but I yeah. don't want to just like s start sending things out before yeah. like, so if we could just get a time, yeah. like a rough, like yeah. July or whatever, yeah. Plus, it would be great to have some sort of dedication ceremony, et cetera, which does yeah. take time. Yep. So. Absolutely. And I've had so many folks come in because, I mean, the thing that I'm, that, there's that, but I, I have not had anyone come in and say, where is the damn donor wall? I, what I have had many people come in and say um, is, I'm a friend of Margaret Freeman's and where is the plaque? You know, where is yeah. the, dedic you know, where is, yeah. we gave money for this yeah. project and I'm like, yeah, we ordered it. It's yeah. ordered. It's coming. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, if you just ask again. Yeah. I will follow up with them. Yeah. Okay. And uh, just so John has kind of like a background, but the donor wall is going on the entry as you come in. It's the uh, wall on the left. It's a uh, so we had a capital campaign. Um, what we were in the planning stages for this and, and even more recently and we came up with a concept for a donor wall that's going to be like bookshelves with spines. wooden book spines that have the names of families and individuals right. that donated or businesses and so we ordered this from the guy that has done as you can see any from here but there are like some uh, slate plaques that are around that were for things that could be named and so he did that work and he's got you know some plaques in his queue that he's supposed to fabricate, deliver, and install. And he's also doing the donor wall with a laser. He's got a laser cutter, etcher, or whatever. Mm -hmm. and so it, but it is a big it is a big project because he has to do each spine one at a time and then put it together and assemble it. So that's taking a while. 
And there's a lot because we, yeah, you know, we're calling it the founders shelf or whatever. That it's everyone who donated like from the beginning of the capital campaign until whatever. It was like five or six take. years. Yeah, so it's it's a big buildup of people. So that one's going to be big. Every subsequent year is not going to be such a big deal, but mm. the first one will be. I mean, it would be great if we had that many people donating lots of money every year, but we're realistic. It's not that. In that case, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Who? You're not too bad. <laughs> Seven fifty-three. Thank you.